Hey everybody, it's Erin from Erin Bun Paints. Welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you step by step how to recreate this beautiful painting beside me. It's called Moonlit Bonsai. The materials needed today include five different paint colors. We have red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. And the brushes I'll be using today include my usual three. We have the large flat brush, we have the medium round brush, and we have the small round brush. As usual, this is an uncut recording from one of my recent Facebook live tutorials. If you'd like to tune in next time to have the opportunity to chat live with me and to hang out with all the other painters, you can check me out at facebook.com slash Paints. Other places to find me include Instagram. You can follow me at instagram.com slash Paints. And also on Twitch, I stream multiple times a week on Twitch so you can come hang out and chat with me as I create upcoming painting tutorial designs and work on some personal art. Twitch.tv slash Erin Bun Paints. All right, let's get into the tutorial. Have a great time painting. Oh, okay. Cheers, Grok. I think I said that already, but double cheers for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first step, everybody, we're going to do the top part of this painting. We have a nice blue. It's actually kind of a purpley blue. I did add a tiny bit of red to it, technically. Uh, so we're going to mix that color together and then we're going to use it to kind of carve out where the moon is going to be. It's just going to be a nice archway. Of course we can see the moon is huge. It's so big in this painting. So I really just made a big archway and then I made the rest of this a nice moon and then the water on the bottom. So the brush I'd recommend is this large flat brush. You can grab that. You can dip it in your water to start. It's always a good start. Then you can grab your plate. Welcome back to my volcano plate, getting, as usual, bigger by the day. Ooh, ah, beautiful. And we're going to mix, uh, as I said, it's kind of like a bluish purple, like bordering. It's like hardly purple, but there was a little bit of red in there just to soften the blue up a bit. So I'm going to mix blue. Start by mixing blue with a tiny bit of red. I do have a new red bottle, by the way, so don't be concerned. This is running out, but I have a brand new fresh red bottle just waiting to be used, okay? So I'm going to start again by grabbing a little bit of red, lots of blue. Thanks, Kaz, we will. Thanks for popping in again. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Andrea, Laura, Sharon, cheers. Uh, Lori. I think you're talking about the other page there. I'll just double check. It's getting annoying. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. As long as I know my notifications were causing issues last time too, like they weren't going out as well, so possible that other pages are having that problem. I hope it's fixed soon. Otherwise, use ketchup. Yes, Groke. <laughs> they exploded all over me today. Oh, man, that's the worst, Laura. Laura says her white paint exploded all over today. Oh, I'm sorry. White's not the worst, though. I would say phthalo blue is the worst for that. So you can see what happens is it kind of turns it just a little darker. It's not quite purple in my opinion. It's just kind of, again, slightly different than blue. And then I did add a little bit of white. So we're actually mixing the three colors. We have lots of blue, a little bit of red, and then I did add a little bit of white just to lighten it up a little bit. It's more of a medium blue tone. So here we go, grabbing my white, mixing it in. And I've said it before, but I find adding just a little bit of red, it kind of tones down my phthalo blue. Uh, if anyone's using the exact same kind of brand and shade that I am here, start Academic Acrylic Phthalo Blue, you'll know it turns out super, super bright sometimes. And just sometimes I don't want it like the most bright kind of neon blue ever. So I find adding again, just a little bit of red here and there kind of mutes it. It just turns it more of what I would call like a regular standard blue. And that's what I was going for for this one. So. Okay, so that was a lot of mixing, but whenever you're ready, we can use that, as I said, to kind of sketch out the curve. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. Uh, but just know that if it is a little bit shaky here and there, once the blue dries, you can use the soft pink that we'll use for the moon to go over top and sketch out again. So this is just kind of a nice practice round. Um, so I'm going to start, this is probably about a quarter, maybe in between a quarter to a third of the way down, right around here. And I like to use the thin edge of the brush, the thin edge of my large flat. I'm going to curve kind of up like this. It comes right to 
you know, near the top, not quite the top, there's a little bit of a gap there, so I just want to make sure it's tallest right in the middle. And it's going to swing down again, and hopefully kind of match up with wherever it ended on the other side. So that's a good way to check that it's nice and even and centered and symmetrical, that this edge is matching up horizontally with this one. I think this one's a little bit taller, so I'll try maybe to bring this a little taller as well. Or wait, the opposite. I should bring this down, actually. That's what I should do. Something like that. So you just have like a nice, very broad archway. That's going to be our moon. Again, if it's not a perfect edge, if there's maybe a little bit of a dip here and there, I would just leave it for now. It might be easier for you to use our moon color to help smooth that out. When you're, whenever you're happy with that curve, you can just fill in above it with this kind of muted blue color. Again, I don't even want to call it purple. I wouldn't say it's purple on my end. It's more of a muted blue. I think that's a better, better term for it. But again, it's your painting. If you want to turn this into a purple, different color, if you want to keep it that nice bright phthalo blue with white, you certainly can. It's your painting. It's important you like it. So use my steps and alter as you like. So I'm just trying to cover it with paint, and then what I'm going to do is smooth it all out by going back and forth like this, just to get all of our brush strokes kind of going in the same direction around the moon. Nice big curves. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. All right. And again, apologies again, Laura, for that white paint. That is just the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. Laura, your notifications are good. Excellent. Maybe my advice helped. I didn't do anything different. I think it's just Facebook deciding what they want to do and maybe if there's anything extra to do on the other end, I don't even know. But I think it's mostly Facebook just being a little finicky sometimes. Christy, I'm missing your video, Erin. This live, you mean? No worries, Christy. This will be posted on YouTube so you can always catch up there. I'm glad you laughed, Laura. It's very good. It's a good... Uh, I don't usually laugh when paint explodes on me, so <laughs> got a good attitude about it for sure. Hey Andrew, nice to see you. I'm very, very good today. I hope you are too. I saw you were excited about the uh, Canada Day painting, and it's posted if you want to see, by the way. When he's using a pencil first. Yeah, no harm in that. If you want to use a pencil, some people use chalk, because that's a little easier just to rub away whenever they're done. Super good to use. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look like the uh, Facebook reactions are working, so any of the floating reactions, if you want to still use those, go for it, just to, because maybe you all see them, it's just me. I just can't see it sometimes, so. <laughs> you can let me know whenever you're ready to move on, otherwise I will, as usual, try and pace this out the best I can, best of my ability. And uh, honestly, I would think uh, we're probably all good with this step, so I'm just going to move right along here. I think that's a good call. So next up, I'm going to be playing with the water a little bit. And what I did for the watercolor, didn't use watercolor, I used acrylic. <laughs> um, I mixed a little bit of white uh, just to use kind of the same uh, tone, this kind of blue, again, the muted blue. But I added some white just to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go to the water first here so that we can leave the moon uh, for next. And then that way we can use the moon color to uh, help shape out this once the blue is dry. So just in case anyone's wondering, I'm switching all the way down here. Then I'll go in the middle. So, taking that brush, you don't even need to wash it off, just use the same one, that's totally fine. I'm going to grab some white and put it right on top of my muted blue. So I'm just making a lighter version of the muted blue that I had in the sky. Sharon's got a thumb, Melissa's ready, perfect. Yeah, I'll try my best even to just kind of paste this out because uh, I think the reactions are quicker than the comments on Facebook, and if I wait for the comments, I think you all end up waiting an extra like minute or two for me to see them, so just to stop that from happening, I'll try my best to kind of go at a good pace here anyway. So once again, I've added white. You can see it's like just a lighter version of our sky. I'm going to use that to shape out the bottom part here. It's just kind of like a wet surface. It's kind of like a nice whimsical painting, this one. Like, this doesn't have to be a real place, it's just like a fantasy place. And I would say I'm putting this about a quarter of the way up. And I'm just going to use the thin edge and just do a semi-straight line, as straight as I can. 
right across like that. Just need to mix a little bit more. I ran out here, it's getting a little dry already. But yeah, you can mark out that part there. Just need a little more white. And I'm gonna cover most of the bottom, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space because I like to um, blend in a little bit of pink as the base as well. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'll put it, trying to mimic what I did here. So I'm just going back and forth, kind of left and right. I'm gonna stick kind of to the top here. I think I'll stick a little higher up here. Whoops. And again, things like this. If you if you do a little bump here and there, I would just wait for the moon color and we can use the moon to help uh, even that out again. Grabbing more here and I'm just gonna bring it further down on the right, I think. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of doing the top layer of the water or the top edge, this blue color. And then what I'll do is I'll teach you how to blend in some pink. So we're kind of getting a little bit of a transition down there. A little bit of a change up, you know, just so it's not all one color. So again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. The idea is I'm just kind of going left and right, whoops, back and forth with this brush and kind of keeping the blue a little bit on the top part of this uh, wet surface area. And then I'll teach you how to blend in a minute or two. And then, excuse me. Carol says, done, excellent. Ricky says, I can see the hearts. Yeah, I think everybody can except for me. I honestly don't know what the deal is with Facebook that it just, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just gonna close down this one here to stop eating up the internet. Cause I, it's silly. I can, I can never, first of all, I can never see it on the main computer, like never ever. So I end up opening up a different device over here so I can kind of look back and forth. That's why I'm always looking down here like that. And then sometimes it just doesn't work either, so. I'm not going to fight it. Hey, Brenna D, nice to see you just watching tonight. Excellent. Hey, how did your, uh, did you do your Father's Day barbecue sauce thing? Curious how that went. So I am going to move on to the next step a little quick because we want this to still be wet for the next step. So get that blue on if you haven't. I'm going to start washing off my brush. Tapping it off on my paper towel. Still a little bit of blue on there, I'm gonna keep washing. The water's very far away from me tonight. It's way over there. And uh, I'm gonna mix together just a nice soft pink and then I'll uh, put it in there and teach you how to blend it, okay? So I'm gonna grab my white, any leftover white that I have. I think I just need to pour some more here. And I'm just mixing red and white, so just any soft pink color. This painting is big on the pinks and blues and purples, some of my favorite color combos. All the prettiest colors, peaches are in here. Ooh, can't wait. It's a nice soft pink. And I'm just gonna start stroking that anywhere where there's a gap on that bottom part here. So the last quarter here, so you can see I'm just filling in any gaps. I'm going to start just by applying the pink and then I'll quickly teach you how to blend it. And I keep saying quickly just because we want the blue paint to still be wet. And for those unfamiliar with acrylics, acrylics dry or yeah, they dry pretty quick within like probably a five minute period. So sometimes we have to work a little bit quick. It's kind of like a little race to see if we can do our blending and all of our soft work before, uh, before things dry. So what I like to do is I like to, as you can see, apply the paint first. Looks a little bit harsh. We can kind of see the blue section, the pink section. But now what we do is we blend it. So I'm just going to wipe off my brush. For blending, what I do is I keep the colors on here. I wipe off my brush. So there's no extra paint. There might be a little pink hanging around, but it's no, no big deal. There's no big extra blobs of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep left and right, back and forth, in between in between the blue and pink. You can see what happens is it just softens up the area. You might see a little bit of a purple forming, which is perfect. So that's what happens, red and blue make purple. So pink and a medium blue will also make somewhat of a purple. You can see I'm just going left and right, sweeping them together, just any form like that, just to make it look like it's more of a soft transition between the two. 
You can always add more color if you need to as it's still wet. So if maybe when you blended your pink kind of disappeared, maybe you want a little more pink, just grab some. Grab some on your brush, swipe it on top, and it'll blend a little bit, but some of it will stay behind. So you can kind of continue to move colors around and blend them together softly as they're still wet. So I love those acrylics. And then the added bonus of acrylics is it dries so that you can go on top of things if you don't like them. So you can see I'm just adding a little more pink. I like my pink, so I'm going to add a little extra here. It just kind of fades up a little higher than it did. Yeah, and anything soft like that is what you're looking for. Again, you're all going to have slightly different variations, I'm sure, and that's okay. Bernadine, we need we made variations. It was yummy. Oh, to like your original recipe? Very cool, very cool. And then Jenea, this video is it going to be available to rewatch? Yes, yes. Maybe I need to uh, think I'll edit my description for the next video just to really make clear because I know that question is asked a lot. No problem, guys, asking the question, but just want to be sure I'm communicating that properly. Uh, yes, Jenea, this video and all other tutorials I do are all available on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Pates. You can even just uh, go into Google and search Aaron Bun Pates and I think I show up now, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> you can always just do that too. Thanks for Nadine for answering that too, yes. And again, thank you again for those who know that. I see you, I see you. Every day you're answering those questions before I find them. So thanks very much. You're all like, yeah, Erin posts here. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome Janine, no worries. Yeah, it is cool, Sandra. It was uh, requested a lot to do that, so. Grok, I'm just looking at your little emote. Is that actually ketchup in there, in that emote? They are mystic. James Charles who? <laughs> yeah, I bought these a while ago. Do you like them? It's literally ketchup. That's so funny. Yeah, they have little pearls on them. They're not, I didn't make them. I bought them. Probably could have made them, but yeah. <laughs> I've worn these before. That is cool. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just because so many people requested that they're up later, and I totally understand that you can't make every single one, and life happens, so I figured I'm, I'm never going to re-instruct these. There's no real point to. I mean, people tune in and watch, and then they know how to do it, so I, I figured I might as well just keep them online, right? And you can re-watch at your own speed, or if you just want to put me on to relax, you can do that. That's totally fine. I know some people are starting to do that, so yeah, okay, thanks, mister. I didn't know if you were about to uh, <laughs> troll me again with the whole James Charles safety pin thing, but yeah, I like them. Okay, I'll give one more half minute just in case anyone's playing around with blending. We can go right to our moon next. Um, yeah, and the other super cool thing about YouTube, guys, is uh, people have found us through YouTube. I've had for the first time somebody commented on one of the YouTube uh, videos and they said, oh, I found this on YouTube. I'm now going to join in live on a Facebook live. So we're getting new friends. We're going to have more friends joining in live because they're finding us on YouTube. So that's very cool too. Hey, Sherry. Nice to see you. Hello. Not Siri. Not Siri. I said Sherry. <laughs> this happens at least once per tutorial where I say hello to a Sherry or somebody else. And then my phone says, oh, you wanted to activate your voice? help with Siri? It's not what I said. Phone. I should just turn off the feature at this point. Gotta be safe. Yeah, I mean, if I'm ever in a situation where I need a little safety pin to pull up a wardrobe malfunction, I now have a very stylish safety pin. There we go. Mish is ready. Thank you. Yes, I was uh, distracted. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm going to go on to my moon next. The moon is actually a very, very soft pink. If you prefer to start with a nice white base and kind of use different colors on top, feel free. Again, it's your painting, but mine is just a super, super soft pink. It's like barely there white, but tiny bit of pink in there. So I'm going to use lots of white. I'm just going to re-pour some white. 
Thanks, Alyssa. I know a lot of people were fans of it. Again, and I wasn't going to teach this one, so I appreciate all of you speaking up. We'll talk more about that in a second, too. I'm grabbing, again, the tiniest amount of red this time, mixing into a large pile of white. So that's a very, very soft pink. Again, you can see how soft it is. I'm trying to show you without dripping paint from the volcano here, but it's like just when it starts to change, change to pink. There's a lot of hair in there, too. Sometimes my hair gets stuck in the paint, just it's not bode well. Uh, get out of there. But yeah, very soft pink is what I'm trying to make. The softest, the softest pink possible. And as I was saying before, you can use this now to shape out anything that you didn't like. So you can just use a fair amount of paint on your brush and then that way it comes off nice and smooth, a nice clean edge. And you can go around this edge here now that your blue is dry on top and the pink will cover it up. So you can even go a little bit on top if you need to. And you can really take your time now. You can really decide where you need to fix anything up, where you need to maybe make things taller or rounder, etc. And just use that light pink to make it happen. So you see how what's happening there? See how it got a little bit rough? That's because I ran out of paint. So that's why it's important to keep reloading your brush and using a fair amount of paint for this. I think sometimes people feel like they need to use less paint when they're doing an edge. I usually encourage more paint because it comes off with this nice clean edge. See how clean that is? There's no roughness. When I started running out of paint, that's what happened. It got all kind of dotty. So I'm going to re-grab some paint. I'm going to go over top of that area again. I'm using a fair amount of pressure as well. So pressing hard on the brush as you go. And you can see that there, clean up the edge. So I'm not looking at the transparency, I'll fix that up. It's the outside edge I'm looking at. It's nice and clean now. Anyway. Hey Julie, nice to see you. Hello, hello, welcome. Yeah. Andrea, I'm glad too. So this one, the story behind this painting is that um, I was just looking for things to paint on Twitch. Again, I've been painting live on Twitch, which is a live streaming platform for the last couple weeks now, which has again been a lot of fun. It's been so fun. Um, and I need content. I need to, I need ideas to paint, right? Because I, I paint sometimes uh, tutorial paintings, but just designing them. So again, you're not missing out on any tutorials if you're staying on Facebook. On Twitch, I just design the paintings and then I reteach them at these tutorials, both on Facebook and Twitch. And um, this painting was just a fun one that I was just kind of messing around with. Um, what I did is I took a screenshot from, it was like a video game trailer that I saw from the PS5 reveal event. And there was a video game that had this beautiful big moon and this tree in front of it. I don't know what it means in the video game, but it was just a cool scene. And I was like, wow, beautiful colors. So I took a photo and then I pretty much painted it. I switched a few things around. I moved the tree a bit and colors are a little bit different, but definitely inspired by that screenshot. And I just did it to mess around. I, I don't know why I didn't think anyone would really want to paint this. And, but I posted it to Instagram. That's what happened is I just kind of posted it up. I was like, look at what I painted. It was more to tell you guys that I'm on Twitch and this is what you can see me do. But then everyone was like, can you teach this though? <laughs> and I was like, I guess, <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I don't know why, I just didn't think people would uh, be interested, but you all told me differently, so I really appreciate that, and uh, now it's here. So keep telling me, if you see me think, post things on Instagram, or see me on Twitch, wherever, anywhere outside of the tutorial realm on Facebook, and you want me to try teaching something that I painted, as long as it's not copyright. For example, I painted a Spider-Man painting on Twitch, like I can't really teach that, because I don't want Marvel to sue me. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, anything else, if you guys see any designs or even just subject matters that you see me messing around with and you'd love to know more about it or anything, just uh, let me know. Keep letting me know. As you can tell, I love my feedback. I ask you guys lots of questions on the Facebook page to uh, answer for me. So I always appreciate any and all feedback. Tutorial times and days and subjects, all the rest. Where we go? We've got Mary. Hey, Erin, have you done a unicorn? Ooh, I have not. So that's, I think that's gonna, that's the more popular subject request right now is animals. And I gotta be honest, guys, I'm avoiding them a bit because animals make me nervous. 
I find it very hard to paint animals without going too overboard on the realism aspect. I really like looking at reference photos. So if I were to pull up a photo of a unicorn or a moose, because unicorns exist, there's many photos of unicorns, but you know what I mean. Um, sometimes I get way too caught up in making it exactly the same, the exact same, and so yeah, I have a lot of trouble making it kind of that in-between, believable, but also uh, realistic realm, you know? So, to be honest, I'm kind of avoiding it, but I'm gonna do it, don't worry. I think I just need to uh, really take my time in terms of getting some good reference photos, practicing. Practicing is good, again, that's what Twitch is for, good practice and experimentation. And then when I've got a design ready, you'll be the first to see, second to see, I guess, if you're watching on Twitch Live, you'd see it, but I'm very quick at posting it to Facebook and Instagram too, so there you go. Let me see. And we've got Mary is done. Sorry guys, I guess I'm talking a lot. I need to uh, hurry on up here. And again, you can use the pink, like I said, to even out the water area. So if you're like me, you had a little bumpity here and there, then that'll be fixed up. Did a great job of Arkham Boy. Yeah, CJ, so that's another one that's gonna come up. I was showing that in a different stream. We have a little kitty cat owl painting, that'll be pretty soon as well. And then we voted on that one and I just need to pick a day for it. Andrea, is it bad that I've never heard Twitch? It is not bad, Andrea, don't you worry. I've been telling lots of people all about Twitch. Lots of people are learning about it, so don't you worry, we're all in the same boat. Um, you know, and I'm in the boat of, I knew what Twitch was before two weeks ago, but the inner workings of it, no clue, no clue. Um, <laughs> and it was my brother who, told me even that Twitch was, had an art community. That's that's what I didn't know, because I thought Twitch was more for the gaming community. It's for live streaming games and people who play games and we can interact while they do that. But I had no idea that Twitch had a whole other set of communities for art, for other games. Uh, like, and, and art includes not just painting, but sketching if you like people watching watching people sketch or do digital art, that's huge on Twitch as well, and I feel like most, you know, are willing to talk about what they're doing, but I want to keep to more of the tutorial realm and uh, also experimenting, so kind of like live streaming while, while interacting as well. Just taking my time to even this out, then we can move right along here. I'll just concentrate on painting for just a second, then we'll get back to chatting here. Even this out here. Just go in there. See, it's a little off. I'm just gonna tilt it down a little more. Just got so excited with chatting with you guys. It's so fun. This playlist has changed. This uh, copyright-free music. This is like inspiring, like movie scene music now. Tiny bit more on that side, and we can move right along here. I assume you're all done. I saw you saying you're ready. Okay, I'll teach the next step, and I'll catch up on the chats there. All right, so next step, everybody, we can do this while the pink is still wet and while it's a little bit dry. So it's a great little step we can kind of keep uh, adding as we go. This might even be a little smaller than yours. That's okay. Um, so what we can do is we can start dot, we can do a few different things. I used my large brush with some colors to kind of tap on some color and again both while the pink was wet and while it was dry. So again this is a great step we can kind of do as it's drying and then when it's dry as well. And I used the tapping method, so tapping with the tip of my brush like this. I'm just demonstrating for now. I'll grab the color in a second. Um, or you can do some brush strokes as well, just small little brush strokes for lots of texture. Without hair, thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, yes, just little brush strokes or tapping. Both work. Uh, the color I used, it was mostly kind of purples and blues. Again, very soft tones. You can see they're very soft amongst all the nice light pink. Okay? So maybe I'll start with the purple and then I'll just turn it a little more blue and kind of show you how to utilize that. So once again, I'm going to keep using the big brush. You can always switch down to a medium sized brush if you prefer that as well. So just keep that in mind. You can always do that. And I'm going to mix just a very soft, soft purple. So you can use either the same spot or a new spot on your plate. 
but soft purple is going to be made by mixing red and blue to make a nice purple and then lots of white to really soften it up. If you're wondering how soft to make it, I would probably make it lighter or softer than you think because it's very easy to make it darker, right? I find it's easier to start a little lighter, kind of get that going, see how it looks, and then if you want something a little bit darker, a little brighter on top, then just mix a little extra red and blue into your pile and that'll make it nice and dark. That way you'll get some nice layering too, right? So I'm going to start with a very soft, oh, all these colors are so beautiful, beautiful. And the key to this, I would say, is just using a small amount of paint. So if you had a lot of paint on your brush after mixing, just wipe it off a little bit. That's what I did down here. I just wiped it on my apron. And you can do, again, one of two things. You can either tap like this. So I'm just using the ends of the bristles here and tapping against the canvas. Tap, 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 tap. Makes a lovely noise, lovely soft little noise. And you can see what happens is when you first start tapping, see how it got a little dark here? As you tap around a little more, it gets softer and softer. So in that way you can kind of make some little shadows or craters on the moon, or big shadows or craters. They're nice and big in this painting. And just kind of tap around like this and kind of softening up the edges a little bit, keeping it a little bit darker, kind of in the middle of the crater. Grab some more paint as you like, just little bits at a time. And you're just tapping this really wherever you want. You can follow where I'm going if you need to, but I promise there's no specific pattern that needs to be followed here. You can put craters wherever you want, any shapes you want, any sizes you want. I just kind of make them what I would call kind of blotchy looking shapes. You can see how it just kind of blotches, kind of curves in and out, wiggles in and out a little bit. And uh, yeah, really anywhere you want. So again, I'll try my best to keep to my original if you really like the overall layout of the original. Otherwise, just add these wherever you want. Um, maybe I'll mention though, I do like especially adding them along the edge. I think that's a really nice look, kind of just on this top edge here. So I go nice and tight to that very nice clean edge and then I kind of tap out closer to the middle. See that? So it starts to kind of fade out and you're giving a little bit of shading almost. Uh, and you'll notice this is looking very soft for now, but again, that's kind of the idea. I like to kind of put down my soft purples first, and then what I'll do is I'll layer on some darker purples, some darker kind of blue purples as well. So this just helps kind of plan out where I want all my stuff to go, makes me a little more confident in the design, and then I can tap on some darker colors. And I'll mention again, I do the tapping method, and sometimes you could try maybe this brush stroke method, kind of like this. I would say I mostly do the tapping. I really only did this, I would say, when I wanted a thicker amount of color anywhere, so maybe in the middle of a crater, so just brushing like this back and forth. As you can see, that allows some texture still, allows it to come off softly, just a little bit of a different technique, so use whatever works for you. Yeah, CJ, I agree. I kind of like that this uh, playlist switched up. All right, let's look through here. Mary says, done. Andrew says, oh, well. Uh, Sandra, I sure can. Um, here, I'll I'll actually just throw in the comments here. Uh, Bet, hey, are these tutorials recorded? I'm really tired tonight. It's, I'm an essential worker. Thanks, Bet, who has been working nonstop. Yep, yeah, good for you. Thank you very much. But would like to do this, of course, Bet. And anyone else asking? Oh, look at you guys again. You're answering for me. Thank you. Yes, Aaron Bun paints on YouTube. I'm going to uh, post the link in a second when I get to the bottom. Andrea says, owl would be great if you're doing an anal painting. I want a cat. Cat's coming up, Winnie, don't you worry. And I know your name isn't Winnie. Tell me your name again if you don't mind. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Exactly. Yes, thank you, Bet. My color is, what color is it? I missed it. It's a nice soft purple, Mary. So uh, red and blue, and then lots of white in there just to soften it up. And then Trisha, yes, sorry if I didn't explain that correctly, guys. That was red and blue mixed together. And then white to make it nice and soft. I'm going to get you two in there. Com. Okay, I've written that in the comments. It might take a quick second to pull up there, but I'll pin it when I see it. So again, yeah, red, blue, lots of white. I'm starting very soft for now. I will darken this up for those noticing that this might look a little softer than in my original. I like to lay down the soft first, and then what we'll do is we'll layer on some darker purples and kind of bluish purples after. 
So I like to put a big patch down here. There's my YouTube. Or, yeah, thank you. I'll try my best to remember. I know you've told me before, so thanks for being patient. I've pinned my YouTube page there on Facebook. Oh, hopefully it worked. Nope, I don't need to moderate comments. No, no, no. There it goes. Again, Facebook's kind of glitching out on me there. There we go. Okay. It is there. Twitch, if you'd like it, I think you can do YouTube like that. There it is! So there it is, Twitch, if anyone needed that. But yeah, I'd recommend subscribing to that. It just, uh, YouTube will notify you when I post, and then that way you don't have to keep checking in for when I post my tutorial. But I usually post the tutorials within a couple hours of them ending on Facebook and Twitch here. What I do is I do some light editing. I just kind of edit out the start a little bit and do a little bit of an intro, so it takes a little bit of time for that, a little bit of time to literally upload it, and then it's online. So usually I say I'd look for it the day after, just so you're not up till midnight waiting for me to post, especially for these later night tutorials. It usually ends up being posted around midnight or 1 a.m. after, after again, it takes a couple hours to literally upload, so just so you're not waiting around, you can uh, subscribe, it'll notify you when it gets there. So again, a nice, uh, yeah, very light purple, you can see how it kind of just fades away a little bit, it's lightly there, and again, it's kind of a nice practice round for everybody, you can kind of lay out where you want all your stuff to go, see how it's looking, this allows you to cover things up if you don't like it, so if you don't like a little patch of purple or you just want to break something up, you can always tap a little more pink on top. That helps for sure. Or just if you have any harsh edges that you want to split up a little bit, you can do the same technique with the light pink. Just tap it wherever you want so it all works together. It all works out. All good. Okay. And then here's the thing. You don't really need to worry about, um, about about uh, covering this area here because there are big trees going to go here so I wouldn't want you to worry too much about making any soft craters in here or doing a layout of any kind because it's just going to be covered up anyway so okay so that's pretty close to what I had in terms of layout again you can see in the original how dark it is in certain areas so what you can do is after you've laid down your nice light purple you can now go in and layer on top just some darker purples or darker kind of blue purples so I'll give you a nice example. I have my brush, which I'm going to clean off. Sometimes it's good just to clean off the brush to reshape it, especially when you've been tapping all over the place with it. Sometimes the bristles get a little bit messy and you just want to make sure you're giving it a nice little clean here and there. So now I'm just going to make a darker purple on my plate. Oh, I'll raise it up here. I'm just adding a little more red and blue. That's a quite a lot darker, so I'm just going to re-add a little bit of white there. So again, it's still, I would call this still a softer purple, but significantly darker than what we had, right? And once again, I want to make sure I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, so I want to make sure I'm tapping it off on a towel or wiping it off somewhere, because or else it's going to come off very thick and gloopy, and that's not really what we want for this. And now you can just go on top a little bit of what you've done already. And what I kind of like to do is I like to stick more in the middles of what I've done. So what I do is I leave the outside edge the nice soft purple so it looks like it's kind of fading away. But then I just darken up the inside edge so it just kind of punches it out a little bit more, makes it a little darker just like in my original up there. So see that again, I've kind of centered it more in the middle. I have the soft purple on the outside. It makes it look a little more faded away and just softer. I'll keep using that word, just softer. But I do the same thing. I'm just tapping with my brush, lightly tapping with small amounts of paint. Okay. And again, you're welcome to use that technique where you're doing the brush strokes back and forth. I, I use that a little bit, but not too much. And it's in, again in no specific areas, I just kind of used it whenever I felt like it. Whenever I was tired of tapping pretty much, I was like, I'll just do some brush strokes now. There's not a whole lot of difference there, it's just preference really. If you're getting tired of your tapping, you can do that. 
So purples, and then you can also do, I used a little more of a blue purple. Again, I wouldn't call it quite blue, but it's more of a blue purple, kind of bordering in between. So if you want to mix that color, I just use, once again, a little more blue. You can mix it right on top of your previous purple. Again, dim it down as much as you want. I'm adding a little bit of red because, again, I like the blue purple kind of in between. Just checking my other one there, maybe a tiny bit more red. And again, all the same technique I'm just going to use. So that's the color there. See how it's just in between? It's like a blue purple. What is it? It's whatever you want it to be. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit, and I'm going to use this more in here. I kind of use the blue purple in these bottom sections here personally. So I'm going to tap like this. See how it shows up much darker here? I like to start in the middle. I'm going to wipe off more paint here. It's getting a little thick. And then just kind of lightly tapping as I get further out so it fades away and just layers on top of that nice purple. So yeah, the light purple is great too, not just to plan out your areas, because it, but it also it helps fade away things. See that? So if we were just using that harsher, more bright kind of blue purple, it would be harder to soften up on the edges. It would be harder to make it look like it's fading away. But because we have the purple helping it now, it makes it look a lot softer. So you're just kind of tapping this bluish purple close to the edges of the purple, but you're leaving the edges alone so that the purple makes it fade away a little nicer. Oh, it looks like I brought it down here. Again, you don't need to follow exactly where I'm going. You can alter as you like. And you'll get some spots, of course, that are a lot darker, some that are more medium. That's perfect. You want lots of variety here. And just little bits of paint time, and always remember, if you add a little too much, you can always use pink, tap it on top, and that'll help break it up and fade it out again. More in here. So we got some splotches going on, some individual ones. Again, I'm trying to keep to my original hand, maybe a little more here. Just break things up a little bit. It doesn't need to all be in the same spot. It can be a little bit split apart in here for sure. Here it comes, yay! Again, these are all great colors to work together too, that's why it's really nice to layer them. The blues, purples, pinks, they're all kind of the same area of the color wheel. They all kind of mold together and that's why they all look so nice, kind of stacked on top of one another. None of them will make a muddy color if you mix them together, so even if it is still a little bit wet here and there, it won't be an issue. I would say mine is pretty much dry, but you might have some semi-wet spots left, so don't worry if you do. It'll all work out fine. How we doing, guys? You guys beating me in terms of speed here? Probably. <laughs> I honestly think I'm almost done here. I might just move, move a little more purple in, but otherwise, almost there, I promise. I'm trying to get it nice and close to the water here just so it looks like it's kind of fading away down below. And again, I really do, I think my water in my original is a little higher up too, so I could change that here if I wanted. It's up to you though. Let me know how you're doing guys if you want a little more time or if you're good to go. I think I have a feeling you're probably good to go. I think more often than not I'm actually slower than you guys now because you're all speedy. You're so speedy. Why are you so quick? I'm just going to move this a little further down. I just feel like these all kind of stop in the same area so I want to break that up a bit just by moving a couple more further in. Maybe this one can come a little further down or something. it up a bit. That's a little better, yeah, just so it's not as not as uniform all the way around. Cool. Hey James, what's up? I haven't stared at your way to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, should I slow down? <laughs> Let me go from the start, I'll just start over, I'll whip this canvas across the room and I'll start again. <laughs> Thanks for popping in. If you were uh, were here earlier, I'm not sure if they're lurking now, but they are here, they're around. I think some of them, uh, yeah. Okay, 
Kaz said he was lurking earlier for sure. But yes, hello James, welcome. Oriana, is that correct? I'm just rechecking. I want to make sure I'm getting this name right. It's Oriana. Ooh, now my paintbrush looks pretty. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully the water looks decent too. Usually, ooh, it's okay. It's like a bluish. Yeah. Usually the water's all murky looking, like a swamp, like shark swamp. Okay, it's all right though. All our nice purples and pinks mixing together. Very pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna spend one more minute, I think, moving my water up a little bit. It's just driving me a little bit nuts that it's a little bit lower than the other one. It shouldn't matter. Sometimes I get that where I just wanna make it look as close as possible to the original so that we know what we were signing up for here. So you can do the same thing if you need to move your water up, you can. I'm just putting a new water line a little higher up here, just chopping it off a little bit more, just so I have a little more room in my water to play around. Our moon is nice and big, we have room to chop it off a little. Again, optional, you don't have to do this, this is me fiddling around, not practicing when I preach. I'm doing that a lot recently. I tell you guys not to worry about small little things like this, and then I go ahead and worry about them. There we go. So you can see how easy that is just to alter if you need to, if you ever need to move a little, little something, something, something a little higher up or anything, you can easily do that. That's fine. Oriana, great, okay. I think the chat might take a little bit of time, Oriana, at least on my end I know it does, so maybe on your end too. So don't worry, it'll pop up. I know mine uh, kind of freezes here and there too. It like thinks about it and then the chat shows up. So it's coming in, don't worry. <laughs> oh, CJ's waving hi there. Uh, James, are you streaming today? I'll try and uh, tune in. I think, uh, who was it? I thought it was you, maybe. Someone popped on at like midnight or 1 a.m. and I was like, oh, I want to watch, but I'm so tired. Anyway. Okay, tutorial friends, I think uh, I'll start to move on a little bit here. I'm not really getting anyone saying they're still working, but I'm also not getting anybody saying they're still, uh, or they're ready. Oh, it's because I pinned my thing. Gotcha, gotcha, Ariana. Okay, perfect. Yeah, they'll pop up above there then. That's cool. Okay, so I'll start to move on here. Still could fix this up. It's just a little tilty. That's all right. Yep, that's what's happening there. Uh, so what I'm going to do next, everybody, is I like to put on the branches of the tree next, kind of like the trunk and the branches, even though you can see the branches come in front. I'll bring this forward so you can really see. Whoops. Uh, the branches do come in front just to make them look nice and clean on top. I did like to do uh, the trunk and then some of the branches here just to kind of show the shape of the tree. So you don't need to worry about getting all the details on here just so you're not doing every single thing twice over. Uh, but I did like to do a couple branches just to, just to again, kind of plan out the shape of the tree, kind of get that arc going, and we can add all the nice pretty colors and then redo some of the branches on top. So I'm going to use a nice dark purple for all of that, and I'm going to switch brushes for sure. Actually, not even for sure. You could use the big brush if you wanted, and actually I do use the big brush often for trees, so... It's actually a little bit of a surprise that I'm switching, but I did use the medium brush this time for this. And I'm going to be mixing together red and blue. This time I'm not mixing white in there. I want to keep it nice and dark. I want a nice deep, dark, scary purple. Not scary. Just deep and dark compared to the rest of our colors, I guess. Not scary purple though. Lots of red, lots of blue. You can see it just naturally turns into a very deep violet color. James, I'm not sure it was probably me I streamed late. Yeah, I think it was. But I know a bunch of you were popping on pretty late as well, so I was getting all my email notifications like, oh, but I want to. It's just such a late night last night. Just needed my sleep, you know? It's a long day today. I had lots of streaming to do, so couldn't stay up too late. 
Okay, so see how it's a really nice deep dark purple. It almost looks black on the camera, but there's a slight difference there. That's the black up there. This is a nice dark purple. And you can use this to start to carve out where you want your tree to be. So my tree, I started a little bit off to the right, maybe about here. So off center for sure, I would say on the right hand side. And what I did is I really swung it over here and then I brought it up and then all the branches kind of swung all the way around kind of to the left and to the right and up every which way. So uh, my theory is to always start very thin with some nice thin trunks, thin branches, and that way you can thicken them up in whatever direction you want. So again, I'm using this medium round brush and I'm just going to use the tip of the brush just to kind of map out where I want to go. So I'm going to go up a little bit, I'm going to swing a little to the left or a lot to the left I'm kind of coming up at the same time though, so I'm going up to the left. I'm going to go a little more straight up now. I'm going to kind of curve up like this. And right around here is when I start to really split into my branches. What is this about? A little above halfway, let's say. Again, I know this looks janky right now, but we're going to fix that up. It's just a little preview. Let's fix it up now, actually. So we have the trunk on, we can fix up the trunk. So once you have just this one line, you can now make it a little bit prettier, make it more trunk-like. So to make it more like a trunk, you want to make sure it's a lot wider at the bottom. So I'm going to bring some more purple down. And again, your choice if you want to move it more to the left, more to the right. That's why we start with a nice thin line. So you can really choose if you need to shift it somewhere. Just using the tip of the brush, kind of bring it down to the right. I even moved it actually into the water a little bit, so it's not even resting right on top of that water line. It's kind of coming down and into the water, kind of like that. Bring it straight across, just like it's kind of hidden amongst the water. So there's no um, roots or anything. It's just straight across, like it's been dipping into the water. Nice and wiggly. You can see how I really like to wiggle it kind of up and down. Get some nice uh, movement in there. And then I'm going to continue bringing that width up a little bit here. You can see it gets a little thinner, but it's still quite wide as it comes up. And what happens is it stays a little bit wide, but then it starts to get thin the further you get up. So trunks and branches, they always start wide at the start. They start at the start, yes, they start wide at the start, and then they get thinner on their way up. So you want to just make sure you're trying to keep it a little bit thinner as you come up here, so you can go over top a little just to clean up any edges, but try your best to keep it a little thinner. And it's not stick thin, but kind of using the tip of the brush to keep it thin. And again, I do like to purposely wiggle a little bit too, so you can have clean edges while still wiggling. The clean edges are when it's quite literally clean here. You don't have any roughness, but it might wiggle a little bit. So you can definitely wiggle with a little more paint on your brush to get a little bit of shape into your trunk there. Little knots and things, you know, making it more tree-like. And why not? Before we add the branches, I will add some of these little roots kind of hanging off here. I thought that was a really cool feature of this tree. Nice little hanging pieces. Just going to extend this a little bit here. So if you like the little hanging roots, you can use either the tiny, tiny brush or you can use this one. Doesn't matter. And I'm just still using Oh, Ariana, sorry, what color is the truck? Sorry guys, it's just red and blue. Just red and blue, nice dark purple. Only red and blue, no need for white here. And I'm just using the tip of the brush. I'm just gonna drag down some little roots or just hanging items. So I'm gonna maybe go from here, for example. I'm just using the very tip, very lightly, kind of wiggle it down. Doing a couple of these little hanging bits. Just kind of again wiggle down and kind of move them a little left and right. They're kind of swaying a little bit. Some of them are a little longer, some of them are shorter. They kind of intersect with one another. See that? Yeah. Some hang a little longer. I'll bring this guy a little further down. 
Just a little here and there, nothing major. So again, you can see I used my medium sized brush, but you can use medium or the small brush, I would suggest probably one of those two. Uh, will this be available what, later? Yes, Nancy, it will. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Oh, thank you, Penny. Penny says she'll have it on her YouTube a couple hours after. Exactly. So I take the recording, I edit it a little bit, and then it's on YouTube within a few hours, and it'll stay there forever, so you don't need to worry about rushing over or anything like that. Ah, Kaz, so I finished what I set up to do today, so I'm going to head to sleep. Good night. Good night, Kaz. Thanks again for popping in. Thanks again for the follow as well. I'll see you around. Thanks, Grok. Appreciate it. Okay, and then if you like these little hanging bits, I also did add a little bit kind of on the right hand side here. So what I did for those, rather than hanging them, I kind of wiggled them a little bit up and down, kind of along the edge of the tree, so you can see you start to make a few little gaps. They're just kind of resting and maybe popping up and down as they go, all kind of tangled together. There's just a couple little lines, and again, it looks like they kind of tangle and intercept together, so you can just do a couple at a time there, creating some little gaps. Nice little detail there. Okay, I'll take a little bit of a pause just because those are some finer details there. I'm just going to work on my trunk a little bit. I can answer some good questions here if anyone has any more questions. So again, I missed that first one saying, what color is the trunk? Again, dark purple, just red and blue. <laughs> High and by <bye>, has. <laughs> ah, yes. We're out in a boat now. Oh yeah, I want to learn that little part. Oh, that one's cute. This girl glove. I can remember that. Okay. I'm just going to bump up my trunk a little more, just adding some small little bumps and things. Yeah, this place has changed a lot. Hey Heather, 11.05. Were you the New Zealand friend? Where are you from today? That was very exciting on one of the streams. Uh, someone from New Zealand popped in. They said, I can't paint right now, but it's just morning here. Yeah, well, I'm just waking up. I'm going to watch you as I wake up. I was like, cool, all right. Amazing. We worldwide, baby. So again, you can see I was just kind of extending the edges, making them a little thinner. You can do that as much or as little as you like. I'll give another quick minute in case anyone's fiddling around with the trunk and then I'll lead you through a few branches before we start to add to our tree even more. I love your little sunglasses emoji. 11.05 here. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's because it's not on random. No, it is. It's weird. Okay. Australia. Oh, so cool! So New Zealand neighbor. Amazing. Welcome, Heather. Are you painting along too? Nice early day painting. That's so exciting. I always get so blown away when people say, like, even if they're like out of just the town, they're like, I'm in northern Ontario. I'm like, really? <laughs> British Columbia. What? LA, get out of here. Australia though, boom, that's like all the way around the world. Very cool. We love everybody from all places here. Okay, so I gave you guys a good minute. I think I'll just continue on with the branches now, assuming we're all good. Maybe at this point, guys, just tell me if you need me to slow down. I think I'll just uh, continue to keep my usual pace here. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, there's no need to add every single branch right now, just because we're going to be tapping on our nice tree foliage here and then we're going to put on the branches on top anyway to kind of layer on top so what i did is i did a few kind of bigger branches just to show where my things will go and then i'll worry about all the nice twigs and details later so i'm just continuing to use the kind of tip or thin edge of the brush if you want to wipe it on your plate or uh, or just use the tip either one works and these branches very wiggly you're gonna wiggle kind of up and down as they go. Woo, going all over here. And they stretch everywhere around the moon. So I'm just gonna do a nice big one, kind of wiggling over here. 
And again, you don't need to worry about them being perfectly clean or tipped right now because we're just going to go over top of them anyway later. This is really just to show you where you want to start filling up with uh, your foliage here. Once again, you do want to try your best to keep them thin to or thick to thin rather. So you saw me kind of go back to fix up this width here. You want to either make sure it's a consistent width with anything below it or a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's why I kind of thickened up this area here just to match. <laughs> snoop, spoop, snoop, snoop. I could have sworn you were already asleep, honestly, so welcome back. <laughs> hey yo. Laura's behind. Okay, no worries, Laura. Keep taking your time. I'll go nice and slow with these branches, okay? And again, I'm not doing all the branches. I'm just going to do a few here and there. So I'm going to split this one in half, I think. I'm going to go a little bit up here. Again, a little bit of a wiggle action. Comes way up almost to the top. Again, don't worry about making the branches perfect for now. It's really just to show where things are going. Uh, I'll swing one. Maybe I'll split it a little further down. So I'm going to split down here on my trunk and I'll go maybe kind of like up and over. So up and then over to the left a little bit, something like that. So I'll point out, you can see I'm kind of splitting everything in V shapes. You see how that's happening? They're all kind of V shapes. It makes it look like they're kind of naturally parting away from the branches or parting away from the trunk itself. So rather than doing anything straight out, straight out, you know, I just like to do more of a curve out and then they can go wherever they want after. So even though this kind of split here, it ended up really swooping over to the left, for example. So you still have the capability to really move it around. And then, yeah, as I said, I'm not going to worry about adding many branches right now, but I will just kind of add a couple more to fill up the space. So I'm going to add one up here. So I'll split that in half. I'll add one, let's see, maybe like up here. So I'm just kind of covering my bases, if you will, right now. 3 a.m. I know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, it must be late. Yeah, I'm impressed with your stamina. I know you stayed up uh, for another one. So, well, yeah, when I was doing the uh, Peggy's Cove, you were, it was what, like 5, 6 p.m. here? So it would have been quite late for you then, too. Dang, dude. So yeah, you can see what I've done. Again, I've covered my bases. I have a branch going pretty much everywhere in the general areas that I want to put my foliage, which is going to be anywhere kind of framing that top area of the moon, anywhere in the middle, just to help myself when I'm uh, adding the foliage and kind of creating the shape of the tree. So if you have something very bare bones like that, that's great. And then uh, we can add some nice branches right after. So Lauren mentioned she's a little behind, so I think I'll wait a minute or two just to kind of see where everyone's at. You can type in the chat if you need a little more time or if you are caught up. And then I'll start to punch in some color. That'll be next. Where's the secret egg? Ooh, well, it's a secret. Can't tell you, or it's not a secret. Snoop, I, I, I forgot the uh, I forgot the egg in my other painting today, but I'll add it in, don't worry. <laughs> I got too distracted. Oh, Carol, sorry, I got a phone call, I had to stop. I will have to finish it on YouTube. No worries, Carol, I want to say I love this picture, can't wait. Awesome, no worries, Carol. If that works better for you, go for it. You know, have a semi-completed painting, you can take a break, and you can catch up on YouTube, as you said. Thanks, Carol, thanks for the update, thanks for coming, as usual. Yeah, Snoopies, if you want to suggest where to put one, let me know. To hide it on a branch or something. Yeah, here, I'll try and whip this up as quick as possible. Probably be up by midnight. You'll probably end up painting it tomorrow unless you're staying up super late, super late. minute just in case anyone's still adding branches. I believe I think it's a good idea. And I was asking er earlier, you weren't on stream earlier, but does it always need to be a fried egg or can it be like a whole just little shell that 
can it be a different cooked egg? I need to know my, my limits here. What am I allowed? Not seeing a whole lot in the chat here. Again, I think what I'll do is I'll move on. If anyone is still really falling behind, just let me know. I'll keep slowing down here and there, but I think I gave a couple extra minutes for the branches there. I'll pour the, pull this forward. That's what we'll do too. We can spend an extra minute talking about it. So the colors I have here, once again, we're sticking with our nice blue, purple, pink color palette. We have this kind of like tealy blue down here, just a little bit. I added a small little patch. Uh, we have more of a medium purple here, so you can see how the dark purple of the branches pulls off of this purple. That's why I'm calling it more of a medium purple. And I would call this more of like a maroon or pinky purple as well. They're all kind of in the bluish purple tones, I would say. All right, so we're doing those three main colors. We can kind of tap them into one another, but it's pretty much those three. Let's start with the smallest one. Let's start with the blue, move to the purple, move to the pink, and kind of blend them together a little bit all, all together, yeah. Mitch says, all good. Excellent. Oh, thanks, McSoupies. Egg hype. Okay, I gotta do it now. <laughs> oh, man. Oriana says, my cat is so annoying. Keeps stepping in my paint. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was happening to you last time, too, right? So I'm gonna wash off my brush. I'm still using that medium-sized brush. And I'm going to mix together my teal and uh, my paint desperately here. Yep, yeah, so teal, if you like kind of the more bright bluish teal I have there, the secret to that is adding the tiniest amount of yellow. So you probably would have guessed you're going to be mixing blue and white together to make a nice light blue. And then again, the key to the teal is mix, mixing just a tiny bit of yellow in there. So I'm going to start with my blue and yellow. It's more of like a medium to light blue, I would say. And then the tiniest amount of yellow. Tiny, 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 tiny. It turns it a little more teal color. <laughs> yeah, maybe the egg's already in it. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> it's right there already. So again, the yellow makes it a little more teal, okay? So that's what I'm using. And once again, what I do is I wipe my brush off a little bit, and then I can use this just the same as I was using the big brush. I'm just kind of using the tip here. I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. And I want just a little less paint on here because I want the bristles to be a little bit more spread out. I want some space in between my taps. So you can see we're seeing the moon through it. It's not like we're putting big blobs on. We wanna just tap, tap, tap. And then the bristles spread apart a little bit and create more of a soft edge and a little bit of a transparency there, right? So this kind of tealy blue, I would say I tap that here, I kind of go up here. Again, you can overlap your branches for now if you want, if that makes things a little easier, because we will clean them up later. It's more important that you're filling up gaps right now, so if you need to tap a little on top to make sure things are nice and tight to the branches, then totally do that. here I think. Again this blue section is a little smaller. If you really like teal and blue, make this bigger. You can extend it further up if you want, extend it further to the right. But for this one I just kind of stuck it more at orange here. You can go places where you don't have branches of course and just make sure you add branches later. That's fine as well. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of going a little bit further away, just knowing that I'll add some twigs here and there to hang on to those little pieces of foliage there. I would say that's it for the blue section. You can see it's pretty small. It's just kind of hiding underneath everything, just on that bottom part. So again, if you like teal, if you like blue for sure, add lots, lots more. I'm going to keep it just like that though. How could you forget about the egg, CJ? <laughs> Gotta happen. Okay. Oh, Charlene, gotta love when you have to charge your phone with anger. <laughs> Are you watching me on your phone? Yeah, it's probably necessary. You don't want me to disappear on you. But yeah, I can relate with all the devices I have going. They're just always plugged in and sharing their plugs going in and out, in and out. <laughs> 
guys my teal. I'll give you a quick minute if you're still adding teal. Maybe you're adding a little more than I am. But just know this will all be the same process. This will all be the same technique and steps, just different colors. So you can really go at your own pace too. If you're a little quicker than I am, switch to a new color, just do the same thing. Give me a quick minute though. Start mixing that color just to prep it. But yeah, that'll be interesting if anyone has a whole different color palette for this one. I have a feeling we'll have most people sticking to it, because I think that's why people liked this, was the nice blue purple pink tone. But we we'll never know. We'll never know. Might be matching it to a different room with a different color scheme. And it's always fun to see the slight differences in the paintings too. I know everyone adds just a slight difference here and there. Okay. Leanne, I'm choosing to use the medium sized brush. You could technically use the medium or the big one. Either one's fine. Oh, Kimberly, lost track of time and missed this. Oh, don't worry, you didn't miss it. You can still hang out here or you can wait for the YouTube video too. All good. Feel free to hang out just to watch and chat or you can watch for YouTube later. All right, so next color, everybody, is, again, I would call this more of a medium purple. It's not quite dark purple, because the dark purple is uh, saved for our branches and trunk. So what I've done is I've mixed a little bit of white on top of our previous purple. So once again, if you need a reminder for purple, it was red and blue mixed together, and then we're just adding a little bit of white to light it up slightly. See that? So that's the dark purple. That's a little bit more of a medium tone purple. Once again, I want to make sure my brush is being wiped off a little bit, just so it's not too bloopy and blobby. And that way when I tap, you can see the bristles start to spread apart a little bit more and become a little bit of transparency. So this purple, I would say I add the most of purple. It really covers up a lot of the tree. So again, I'm kind of following my branches and also choosing if I want to add more in other places too. Again, the branches were really just a help show the overall arch kind of of the top part of the tree, but still continue to uh, tap and move kind of your foliage in and out, right? You don't want to do a complete arc kind of matching the arc of the moon. We still want to move a little in, a little out. So I'm moving back in the tree a little bit. I'll move out again, because that'll help really show the viewer where the branches are, where all the leaves are going. See that we're creating a little bit of a wave wave. Tapping like that. There we go. And again, you can use your branches just as a guide. You can kind of move up them and down them. You can go right to the tip top of the moon. I actually even overlapped a tiny bit here and there, kind of going just above the moon, just reaching up. So feel free to do that here and there just to really get everything nice and separated so it's not turning into one big ball tree. You want it still to be small little areas in and amongst one big tree. So maybe think of it that way. You want just all these different sections kind of working together. They all end up connecting, but they're all still kind of separate from one another. So again, this purple, I add lots of it. I'm continuing to move to the right. Maybe I'll go a little over here. I'd say I come probably down here, it looks like. So I'm going to leave kind of the right hand section for a nice pink maroon color. So I'm just continuing to tap in the paint, grabbing little bits at a time, lightly tapping. And I find using a lighter hand when tapping helps as well because I'll show you the larger you, or the larger, <laughs> the harsher you tap, more bristles end up touching, you get more of a blob. If you tap a little lighter, you're more likely to hit only the tops of the bristles, and that gives you more of that stippled effect, which is what I think I'm looking for personally. So I tap lighter, even though it looks like I'm tapping hard. I think it's more so that I'm tapping quick. Doing lots of tapping. Important sound effects. And there's nothing wrong with throwing on a little extra paint here and there to make it look like there are some more cluttered areas and then some areas that are a little more open. Once again, it all kind of works together. And then one last thing I'll point out, you can definitely combine sections. If anything, I encourage you to overlap a little bit just so it's not, again, as defined. Blue, purple, pink, we want them all to kind of mold together a little bit. So again, you can use the bristles here, the top ends of the bristles lightly tap a little on top of your teal 
and then that way you get a little bit of a combo going. You get a little bit of purple on top of your blue there. They say hello, they mix and mingle. Maybe a little over here. Yeah. Maybe some over here. Again, and then that way you still have the distinct colors, you still have the distinct sections, but there are some little in-betweens too where they just seamlessly mold together. So make sure you try that. Just lightly tapping. Now it looks like it's fading into one another. Good, good, good. So I'm just going to keep tapping purple. I want to finish off this little section here. Need to mix a little more, it looks like. Running out once again. Sorry guys, my nose has been really runny today. I'm very sorry if that voice hit the microphone there. Okay, so I'm going to keep bringing that down. Filling in the middle. And you, wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I hope yours is turning out too. Oh, Barb, I forgot you were doing this one tonight. Oh, a lot of people forgot. That's okay. Means you had a nice fun night, I hope. Had some plans going. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Exactly. Yep, it'll be on YouTube. It sounds like you know that, Barb. So that's excellent. All good. All good. So all I'm doing now, guys, is I'm just tapping a little harder, maybe just a little extra, more in the middle, because I really like the idea of filling up the middle. See how it's a little more cluttered in here? And then it gets a little softer on the outside. I really like that look, so I'm just personally going in and tapping a little more purple, especially kind of in the base here, more in the middle of the tree, keeping the outsides a little softer. Tapping just a little bit here and there. Left my purple, so yeah, it's looking pretty similar. Always trying to make it nice and similar. Give a quick minute if you need to look at that, and then I'm just going to move on to our last color. Again, the exact same technique, just slightly different color. Painting is so pretty. Thanks, Groke. I really appreciate it. Again, I'm so happy people spoke up. I was going to just use this as a practice and put it away, so I'm so happy. Oh, shoot, Barb, you didn't get a notification. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did you RSVP to the event page? Facebook caused same thing on the last tutorial. People were saying they didn't get a notification even though they did all the things that I thought were necessary for a notification. I'm so sorry. I really don't think it's anything on my end I can change. I think it's like Facebook choosing when to notify people about things. Um, in my past experience, if I RSVP to a Facebook event, usually it's pretty good about popping up with notifications, but I totally trust that didn't see it it didn't happen so I'm sorry I'm also trying to post my schedule by the way guys a little bit more um, so if you have an agenda or a calendar you can kind of write write down on your end when I'm uh, going live so each week I'm creating a schedule and pinning it to the top of the Facebook page and on Twitch as well so you both get the same schedule so you know exactly where you can find me at uh, any hour of the day. <laughs> uh, not really, but yeah, it'll show when I'm online and where. So I have a little section for tutorial and it has both the Facebook and Twitch logo in there and it shows that, uh, yeah, when I'll be on. So if that helps, if you have another notification system like a, a calendar on your computer that can send a little, a little notification, you can stick this in there. I'm sorry, because I think Facebook is not not very reliable recently, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, where are you? <laughs> I think it's Facebook, yeah. And people were just talking earlier about uh, another page having the same issue, so I know it's not just me either, it's a different page as well, so it's Facebook. <laughs> See to a change lately. See, that's annoying to me, Melanie. I'll uh, keep talking about that in a second. I'll move on to the last color, in case anyone's waiting for that. So I call this more of a pinky purple, maybe maroon tone. Again, lots of different names for different colors according to how people see them. Teach you how to mix it. You can call it whatever you want. Really trying to use up this red bottle. I can't wait for it to be done here. <laughs> Just on its last little bits, last little blobs. So what I did for this one, you guys, is again, it's more, it's still in the purple realm, but it's just more red. So I'm adding lots of red to my existing purple. 
And then I added maybe a little bit more white just to lighten up the tiniest bit more. If I have any more. So I did add the red on top of my previous purple and that's why it turned more of the maroon. If you're using a new section of your plate or palette, you can mix lots of red with just a little bit of blue this time and then a little bit of white to make it a little bit lighter. So see that? It's creating a little bit more of a light shade. It's a little better lighting wise, yeah. And I'll pop this on, you'll really be able to see it against the purple. Just wiping it a little bit, again, same technique, using less paint, tapping with the bristles here. Yeah, this place does match. It's very yeah, spacey, it's cool. So see that, how it looks kind of pink, especially on top of the white moon, not white, light pink moon. Uh, yeah, it'll really pop off a little bit brighter. But you can see it almost borders on the purple realm. It's like, which one is it, pink purple? Who knows? But yeah, same technique, guys. We're just using those little bristles there, lightly tapping. Once again, I encourage you to tap a little bit into your other section so you can see I'm tapping first into the purple here. I'll lightly tap a little on top of my blue. I just don't have a lot of blue sections, so I want to be a little more careful. You can see the nice layering there. Yeah. And then same thing, I'm just continuing around this right hand edge of the tree, still trying to remember to kind of come in and out of the tree. So I got lots of shape going. We have the overall arch, but it still comes in and out throughout, right? And it's starting to look heavy. The plate, yeah. I'll get a scale one day, I'll weigh it, and I'll show you guys how much it weighs. It's gonna shock some of you, I think. I did another uh, drop on one of the streams where I picked the plate up and dropped it on my desk, even just from like a couple inches high. People were still going, they had no idea how heavy it was, and it rattled the whole camera. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh! I wish you could all just hold this thing for a quick couple minutes to really, really know how what it feels like. It's like resting on my legs right now, and it continues to rest there because I cannot hold it for much longer with my arm. Paintballs make excellent weights, and then paint plates as well. I'm looking for a nice home gym. I'll show you guys my home gym, it's all paint models. Just kidding. <laughs> but I tell you, if I ever need weight, if I'm doing some like squats or something and I need a kettlebell, kettlebell, one of those to hold, I don't work out a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna use a paint bottle, why not? I don't need to buy a, a weight, I don't need to spend money on weight. I've got weight. Got plenty of it. Yeah, this is so spacing and cool. Okay, yeah, Barb said haha. I think you're haha at the Facebook thing. Yeah, haha. It's it's annoying, honestly. It's uh I really wish they would at least like notify when that kind of thing happens or why or how to change it, because I'd like to let you guys know like what you guys can do on your end. Because I, I was always under the impression that RSVP, and that's why I always say to RSVP to the event page. I was seriously under the impression that that's all you needed to do, and that's all that's happened on my end when I RSVP to events. If anything, it notifies me too much. It'll be like, did you know you have an event in a week? I'm like, yeah, I remember. Did you know your event is tomorrow? Yep, yep, I still remember. Hey, did you know it's starting in an hour? Like, it keeps notifying. Um, so it's too bad that they pulled it back so much that it just doesn't notify at all. I don't get it. You'd think they'd want people to use their service and therefore notifications would be a thing. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, I encourage you guys, find some other methods of reminders. I use, uh, like iCal for example, you can set little alarms. It's a good one. Set an alarm on your phone for Friday at 7.30 or whatnot, whatever you gotta do. Whatever you gotta do. It sounds like Facebook can't be relied upon right now, so. If you're worried about missing the next one, just set a quick little alarm. I think that's probably best. But also no two. YouTube is an option, so there we are. Okay, so once again, I'm still going in with my pinky purple. I'm just stacking on a little bit more, kind of in the middles here. See, it happened here. I'm going to continue in here. Making it a little heavy. Grow up when you first said heavy. I thought that's what you meant, like my paint was getting a little heavy on the canvas. I was like, oh, that's a good thing. 
but I think he meant to play. Uh... But yeah, you can see as I lift it up, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a, it's a good little workout. Phew, <laughs> sweating. I can't wear a sweater when doing this, I'm just in the middle of a workout here. Alright, I'm, I'm liking that coming together there, so again, I've done my nice little overlapping, so I got a smooth transition everywhere, it looks like it kind of molds together. Again, we have our separate sections, but still kind of molding together a little bit. I think I want to bring this down a little bit more, a little bit more. It kind of hangs down a little bit on this right-hand side, I think. Just a little extra. I could even add a little more on this side, maybe some purple. I'll do that real quick, just as I'm waiting for fun. I'll give everyone a minute or two more. And then all I'm going to do next is go back to our branches. So really a similar step we were doing. So if you still need time to dot on your foliage, your leaves, etc., whatever you want this to be, uh, you still have lots of time. You can keep taking that good, good time. Lighten it up, that's what I need to do. Where'd my white go? Constantly losing my colors. Would you guys be upset if I started a new volcano plate? Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm probably gonna do it because not I won't kill this one, I'll keep it keep it close by and safe, but yeah, it is really rough to try and use this to mix some colors sometimes. I lose the colors, they're all spilling everywhere, not to mention the heaviness of this thing. But I think I might start a new plate soon. I don't know your thoughts on that, if that's a big betrayal to this guy, but I think it needs to be done sooner rather than later. <laughs> I don't know how much higher this thing can go, realistically, <laughs> while still using it for painting, so hopefully you support me in that decision. Thank you. <laughs> and then we can watch a new one grow. I think that would be a lot of fun, you know? Seen Mish, yeah. Oh, uh, we got two of you there. Oh, a bunch of you. Sorry, I missed a few comments. Charlene, I have to go. Thank you so much. See you Sunday. Okay, I'll see you Sunday, Charlene. Thanks. Melanie, Google reminders not remind me either. What's wrong? What's wrong with all of these services right now that none of nobody's doing their job at reminding? Robots, hello. Just need you to remind us of our painting streams. Thank you. I set the time in my calendar so I don't miss you. Excellent, Mish, yeah. I'm the same. I'm, I'm a written calendar gal, so I'm always looking at my written calendar, you know? No electronic reminders. I'm just constantly looking at a written thing that I've made. Beautiful. Thank you, Melanie. So again, I'm still giving a quick minute. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay, that's good. I think, you're, I think that was in support of my new plate idea. Thank you, Julie. Again, it feels like I'm betraying this thing if I start a new one, but what I'll do is I'll keep this one around, maybe I'll whip it out for special occasions or something, but dang, it's heavy. And I do, I don't know, it's fun to see how, how high it can go, but I don't know. No get rid of vigorous, must be tired. <laughs> yeah. Do you see? <laughs> it just snaps. <laughs> yeah, it's more so my legs. It rests on my legs the whole time. And a bigger plate next time, yeah. It, but is that the mistake, Penny? Because then it gets into a bigger volcano. It just means there's more space for it to, you know? Perfect paint pound, yeah. New volcano plate if you need to. Excellent, okay. We'll see. I'll, uh, I'm almost there, though. Think about it. I have lots of plates I could, uh, yeah, use. I mean, again, it served its purpose. The whole point was to reduce the waste on throwing out a plate every time I paint, and I mean, Five years going strong. I think it, I think it serves its purpose. I think it's okay if I make one more. <laughs> it's lagging so much. Oh, I'm sorry, Aurea. It's like a little jittery on my end, but still pretty good, I think. You can always rewatch on YouTube too if you think you missed anything. Or just ask a question if you missed anything. I'm happy to answer if you write it out. Okay. Alright, so I gave some time there. We're going to just go back to do some branches now. So again, it's kind of a repeat step. So no rush if you're falling a little behind. I think you can easily catch up here. So all I'm doing now is I'm continuing to use the medium size round brush. I'm just mixing together red and blue. So 
So going back to my nice dark purple, so only red and blue. I want just the nice deepest, darkest purple possible, so no white required, just red and blue mixed together. Nice deep violet. And personally, in this painting, I liked the idea of having all the branches very much kind of forward and very clean. Uh, if you'd like to hide some branches, you can certainly hide some underneath all of the nice tapping that you just did so you can keep some a little more faded away but what i did is i actually went over top of these and cleaned them all up i really liked the idea of having them just nice and again prominent even though that might not be the proper way right because i think in nature you have the branches all kind of hiding behind i don't know again this painting it's a little more of a mystical kind of whimsical you know fantasy land so i did what i wanted i put my branches in front today <laughs> yeah oriana yeah i'd recommend uh checking out the the video if you, if you missed anything but yeah just write write if you miss anything i can always repeat and help you out sorry if it's lagging a little bit so i'm starting off just nice and simple by going over top of the branches i've already done so not a lot of thinking here and just wiggling away, overlapping as I go. And again, your choice, you can leave some behind if you want, behind the new tapping, but you can see it really moves them forward. I think it just cleans them up, makes them look really, really in your face, you know? And then what I like to do is I now really start to add lots of little branches. So this is where all the nice detail comes in on the tree. I'm just using my tip of the brush or thin edge if you want to wipe on your plate like this. You can see it kind of lines, lines up your bristles to be nice and thin all together. And we're just adding more small branches. So just like before, I'm kind of using those V shapes, kind of splitting off in a V shape here and there. And make these guys a little shorter because they're just smaller little twigs just filling up spaces now tiny little twigs here and there you can split apart your branches into v shapes moving them around adding individual twigs just splicing off here and there wherever you want again you do not need to follow exactly where i'm going i'm trying my best to generally look at the design that I have back there to get it as close as possible, but even I, I'm sure, will be very different from the original in terms of branch layout and having these all doing slightly different things. But yeah, just keep to the idea of keeping them nice and thin, wiggling them along. They don't need to be straight, if anything. I like to purposely make them a little bit curvy. Kind of like a rickety looking, you know? They can crisscross over one another. I love that look as well. They don't all have to be on their, you know, different paths. They can crisscross and move around. Sometimes adding a little bit of water to your paint helps. It helps kind of keep it a little smooth as it's moving. Helps, uh, it also helps with the uh, thinner lines as well because what you're doing is you're thinning out the paint, right? Making it a little bit easier to make thin lines with. But again, I think as long as you stick to kind of the V shapes and the idea of splitting things, that's how I think of it. You're always just splitting things. You can split them at the very ends. You can split them at the very starts. Like down here, split this one. All of them work. Yeah. So I'm just going to take some time now and start to fill up the whole thing. You can see how it is going all the way around. You can work wherever area you want, first or last. Add some in the middles too. Don't forget these little middle areas. That's important as well. All of these leaves need something to hang on to down here. Make some longer, make some shorter. Variety is good. And I'll say again, if you want to hide some branches behind, you want to maybe cover up some with more foliage or leaves, that's totally up to you. I understand that's more of the realistic look that you would have some branches hiding behind. But again, I'm embracing more of the fantasy look today. This is quite the fantasy painting in my opinion. I'm making this the way I want. It's my dream. Oh, 
I did this a little bit too. Uh, you can kind of uh, add some gaps in your branches as if they are maybe even hiding behind a little bit, as if they totally disappear from behind the leaves and then come back out. I'll show you what I mean. So maybe this one, for example, maybe what I do is I stop it here, I leave a small gap, and then I continue the branch like this. Kind of like an extra tip, it makes it look like it kind of went behind the leaves, completely covered, and then came back and had a little bit of an ending over here. So try that if you like the idea of maybe hiding behind a little bit. I did do that here and there. So again, a small little gap. That way it makes it look like it's kind of weaving or threading in and out behind those leaves. One little extra technique you can do. with each and every branch it just looks more and more kind of complicated and detailed even though I'm using the same technique each time. It's just kind of filling up the space with lots of tiny little branches all threading in amongst one another. And I love crisscrossing them. I think that looks super cool. Bring some further down, further up. I think I'm nearing theme out that I want. Obviously you don't want to fill it up so much that it's just like a total cluster, but like, there's no harm in adding lots of small little, especially the little twigs I think are really nice, you know? Just splitting them at the end. Really ensures that each little section is taken care of too. Yeah, I think that's pretty much there. I don't want to add too many. There we go. Andrea, yeah, so it turns out trees are not my thing. Oh, <laughs> trees are difficult. Trees, um, I think, are one of one of the uh, main things that take a long time to kind of master. Not even master, just like get comfortable with. Uh, I was going pretty fast there with all of my branches because I've kind of found a rhythm with mine. And I found a technique to, you know, how much pressure I'm using, how I'm holding my brush. It just comes with a lot of practice, I find. So don't worry, Andrea, it'll come. Keep working at it. Yeah, it's good that you're trying this, even if it's not your thing for this painting. It might be for the next one or the one after. So there you go. Trees are difficult. Yeah, Miss Grove agrees. Trees are difficult. CJ it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's filled up enough. Don't want to add too much more. So once again, I'll leave everybody another minute or two if you're still adding here and there. Uh, and we will still be working with purple next. We want to add a nice little reflection that we have in the water few extra lines. Yeah, then we've got pretty much just water stars. Yeah. But again, I'll leave a minute or two. You can keep taking your time if you're still out of your branches. Oh, this is the Lupichu song. Interesting. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Just because of, yeah, trees are just like a lot to look at too, you know, you get a little overwhelmed with where all the things are going and again, I find there's so many techniques to how even just you're holding your brush, which brush to use alone is like a big decision. <laughs> and I'm using this medium size, usually I use the big one, so that, that was actually a little bit of a switch up for me today with this painting, so there you go. Different strokes for different books. I read it, read it three times. I need to stop for now. Gotcha. Yep, sometimes you need a little bit of a break too, so all good. Yeah, revisit uh, for the YouTube. Maybe that'll be a little better. Thanks, Erin. Oh, you're welcome, Laura, of course. No problem. <laughs> it's okay. I gotcha. I can run. <laughs> all works.
Okay. Okay, so everyone, I'm going to move on to another step here. I'm just going to continue taking that same purple. It was the very nice deep dark purple. Can't really see it there. There we go. And we want to add a little bit of a reflection. See how the reflection comes down? Let me show you something else too. We have a reflection here. And then we also have some purple kind of just streaks here. I kind of imagine that those were just kind of the branches maybe reflecting off a little bit darker. I know it looks a little scraggly, so if you're not really a fan of that look, maybe you want to keep it just softer with all these colors, you certainly can. But I'm just going to continue using the purple because we have it on our brush. We can use it for the reflection and these kind of scraggly lines. You can see, I think it all kind of comes together when I add these with some kind of dry brushing of color from the leaves and then all of the other very soft colors in here that we stack on. So I don't know, give it a chance if you please. Otherwise, if you feel like it's going to be a little too harsh for you, you can uh, keep to the softer colors, which is what we'll add after. So first, I'm just going to add the reflection of the actual trunk. So I'm just using the same color. All right. And I'm going to be doing lots of little horizontal lines. So see how I'm just kind of using the tip of the brush just kind of pressing and moving a little bit and kind of doing lots of those and stacking them all amongst each other so you can still get a little bit of a kind of wet watery look it kind of looks kind of ripply while also kind of filling it up into more of a nice uh, deep reflection there and what I do is I'm trying to follow along kind of a mirrored image of course so I kind of curve down you know because I'm mirroring where this is going here so I'm going to start by Coming right below the nice big large trunk. Quickly these all start to come in a little bit. I'm just going to grab more paint. Make some more paint rather. There we go. I'm trying to just kind of follow along the mirrored image so all of my strokes start to come in a little bit closer. And they're all swinging over to the left because they're mirroring what this has done here. And it doesn't need to exactly mirror, of course, because this is a reflection, so you can see that's why I'm doing all these small little strokes. It's going to be a little bit wobbly here and there, as long as it's mostly following where your tree is going, right? It's just kind of fading away into the bottom part here. And then I do like to add a couple little small strokes on the edges here just to make it look extra broken up, you see? extra kind of glittery broken up there. Really even pulling them out a little further too. So that's what water does, it kind of like picks up little glints of color even a little further out, so I really like the idea of kind of splitting those up a little bit more. Melanie, brush anxiety is really, yep, mm -hmm. need more wine, says Laura, there we go. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Maybe it's about finding your right type of wine for painting. It's <laughs> whatever you need. Mish says, it took me forever to find the right technique and the right brush. Exactly. And it's going to be different for everybody. Maybe it happens to be the exact same as mine, even with the paint as well. The paint might be a thing for you. You might like a different consistency of paint, thicker, thinner, etc. But more likely than not, I think it's going to be different for everybody. And everyone, again, yeah, has different brush sets at home using different amounts of pressure. It's about finding what works for you exactly. It's about sticking with it. Mish can attest to that for sure. As she said, it took her a while, but she's got it now. So there we go. It's amazing when you get it too. You're like, yeah, I did it finally. And then you get to learn different trees. And then you're like, okay, I'm starting over again. I'm learning a different tree and I'm back to kind of square one, figuring out techniques. And it's just about learning and learning and learning. Okay, so I was talking a little earlier about the kind of, I'm going to call them scraggly bits, because they are pretty scraggly looking, and uh, yeah, I just imagine that they are kind of more defined reflections of some branches maybe, so I'm just taking my purple, the same purple I've been using for the trunk, the branches, the reflection, I'm just using the thin tip of the brush and kind of doing a couple little squiggly, very thin, as thin as possible, squiggly lines coming out, and again, I kind of imagine that they're just a little more kind of prominent uh, reflections of some of the branches just kind of pulling through. I'm not at all looking at these branches up here to match. I'm really just kind of pulling out a couple here and there. See them? They're kind of scraggly looking. And to really, again, really help get a nice thin 
brush stroke like that, I use some water in the paint. It helps thin out the paint. I make sure to wipe the brush on the edge of my plate so that we get a nice thin lineup of bristles there. And then just very lightly dragging the very tip across. If you have some gaps here and there, that's perfect. It makes it look even thinner if you leave a few gaps in between. But once again, I'm just kind of working out here, bringing them out here, it looks like. Again, I don't want to try and justify this step. It might not make a lot of sense to some. It might not look great to some, but it's just what I kind of saw in that screenshot that I used. And once again, this is more of a fantasy land, so things don't need to make sense. I just think it looks cool. Do what you want. Do what you think looks cool. And add a little bit more. It looks like I really stacked them on over here. Just a little bit of an extra cool reflection there, yeah. I decided this will now be a practice painting. There you go! And here's the thing, like this can be a practice painting and then maybe, um, you know, even as your next painting you can try this again or you can try a different painting, see some different techniques, come back to this one, revisit it. I've done that too. I've done that where I, I did it the other day on Twitch. I had that Peggy's Co painting and I, what I did is I used it as a practice painting. I liked certain parts of it. Other parts I wasn't a fan, but I redid the sky like four times live on stream. I was covering things up, waiting for it to dry, putting more on top. And each time it got a little bit better. I still wasn't a super fan of it by the end, but point is I was learning. Every time I put something else on, I was like, I like that a little better, I like that a little better. And I was like, that didn't work. I'll try this now. And it's just kind of learning thing after thing, what's working and what isn't. Okay. I'll give a quick minute. If anyone's still adding the scraggly bits, then what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush on some color just to make it look like some of the leaves are being reflected a little bit. Then we can add lots of layers and then just the stars, and that's pretty much all. Okay, just checking out the artist on this uh, playlist here. This is lagging way too much. Oh, I'm sorry, Oriana. Oh, no. Again, if you've missed anything that I can help you with, please let me know. Otherwise, maybe check out the YouTube tutorial and see if it's a little bit better. Because it'll be recorded from my screen. And there is, again, there's a slight delay. Like, when I move my hand across, it kind of jitters a tiny bit. But I don't think enough that it's crazy amounts. Anyway, you'll see. Okay. I'm gonna wash this off. All right, so let me point out here, what I'm looking at is just this little piece here. Once again, if you're not really a fan of this kind of sweeping up, cool, you can skip it. Um, what I did though is I took a little bit of our kind of medium purple, our pinky purple, and I was just kind of swiping up from the bottom to make it look like maybe some of the hanging bits are being reflected right around here because the tree's up high, right? Uh, we're gonna see just maybe like the bottom edge of the leaves here. Okay, so again, the pinky purple, and I would say the light purple here. And I'm just gonna be using small amounts of paint dragging up. So let me demonstrate. I've got a clean, medium sized brush. I'm gonna dip into that kind of pinky purple that I have on my plate. You only need a little bit, so even if you have a tiny bit that is still a little bit wet, that's perfect. I've got it on my brush again, this pinky purple, that's what I grabbed. I'm just gonna go from the bottom. Just a little bit of paint and just kind of sweeping upwards like this. See that? Comes off a little bit dry, a little bit soft. So it makes it look like a little bit of a dry patch or a little reflection there. Look at that. So I chose to do that. There we go. I'm gonna keep it propped up here. I chose to do that with the pinky purple, and I chose to do that with uh, the medium purple that I used for the leaves here. So that was purple mixed with a tiny bit of white. And the same thing, you can just take a little on your brush, and you're just kind of swiping up from the bottom. 
just makes it look like, again, there's a little bit of a reflection for those leaves there. There we go, and I'll go over here. Again, I know this part won't be for everybody. If you'd rather just keep the water a little cleaner, you can. That just kind of adds a little bit of a nice, interesting reflection. I don't usually do vertical strokes for reflections, but for this one I did, kind of sweeping up. You can overlap a little of your reflection here of the trunk. If you'd rather keep it cleaner, you could go back over top and cover up again. I'm just going to keep it as is, though. Okay, Caroline, Carolyn, this is my first time being with you. I've thoroughly enjoyed Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, if anyone needs to go, totally cool. I don't have much to go. I'm just going to be layering on some new colors in here, and then it's really just the stars that look good. So we'll give a quick, oops, quick minute or two if you're doing that little dry brushing. Again, that was the pinky purple, the medium purple. I didn't do blue for some reason. If you'd like to do blue, you certainly could. It would make sense that maybe some blue is there, but once again, my painting, my rules. <laughs> I do what I want for this one, really, truly. It's good, it's freeing, it's nice. Let's bring this forward. Get a comparison going on. Huh? Pretty similar. So yeah, all we really need to work on next is uh, all of this in here. It makes it look a little more glittery and watery, right? And then just the stars, and that's really it. Looking pretty similar, let's see. Pretty similar, but still a little different. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. here maybe I'll show you all the nice little colors in here so the idea here is that you can you can kind of see the base of the blue pink right we have the blue and the pink bases but to make it look nice and kind of glittery with all the different colors here I added uh, many different versions of kind of purples blues peaches so for example this is what I would call more of like a soft purple and what I did is I just took my brush here the medium sized brush the nice tip and I was really just kind of bringing along some either horizontal lines or just slightly wavy lines. So I did that with some nice soft purple on top, maybe more of like a soft blue, kind of like the colors from our moon, right? See those? It's like I've brought them down. I've incorporated them down here, layering them on top. Uh, and then I would say the main event here is this kind of peachy area, my favorite area. I used a little bit of a peach color and some pinks to kind of put on some little waves and reflections just to make a nice light spot in here. And then some nice light, light peach on top. So you can really go wild with how much you're layering this if you want to add lots of different shades or just a couple. Again, I'll try my best to get it as close as possible to the original here. But you can choose if you want to go in and add even more. Okay, so I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to wash off my brush. And I'm going to try my best to make a purple or a blue similar to what I was using in the moon. So if you need to remix purple, it was blue and red. And again, I'm using my medium sized brush for all of this. You could use your tiny brush if you want to, but I find this brush holds more paint, so it's a little easier to use kind of all at once. But again, purple is made by mixing red and blue, and then I do mix white in it as well. So trying to get more of that moon purple, I guess a little lighter maybe. Anything around that realm though, more of like a light to medium purple, let's just say that. It doesn't need to be the exact moon shade of course, it can be anything around that. But all you're doing, just for the technique here, I'm using the thin edge of the brush or I guess the tip, either one, and just kind of doing some small little horizontal strokes. They can be straight horizontal, they can be a little bit wiggly as you go but I would say most of them are pretty short. I think that's more the key here. You're stacking them all similar to what we did with our reflection, maybe just a little bit less. You don't want to stack them so much that they create a big pile. They're all just kind of in and amongst one another, maybe overlapping a little bit. I'll give you a nice whoops close up here. See that? So again, you have some that are very tiny. You have some that are a little longer, some that are straight, some that are a little wiggly all together there. They're all having fun together. So I've got purple. I'm going to put this purple just where you see me putting it, kind of in this upper area, maybe a little further down.
You can keep some areas a little more cluttered. You can keep some a little more spaced out. Maybe this bottom part I'll keep a little more spaced out, for example. Now we can really see the pink showing through. Yeah, while I wouldn't while I wouldn't clutter kind of the same color on top of one another, I think it's really cool to layer different colors on top of one another. So if you wanted to clutter up more with like a different shade of purple or just a different color in general, that would work very well. Uh, Oriana, sorry, I was laying out too much. What color is painting? Oh, it's okay. It's a nice light purple. So blue, red, and a little bit of white. It's kind of like our moon color, maybe a little bit darker than the purple we made see how it pops off there. So really any color that's going to pop off just subtly off of your blue pink. You can really think of it that way too. Any color would work that way. More of a medium range so it's not super dark like our reflection here. And it kind of like molds into the blues and pinks. So I'll do another one. Maybe I'll add a little bit of extra blue to our purple. So again maybe going for more of the blue purple in our moon. Grabbing some white for example. Let's try that. So this is just a blue version of our purple, kind of more blue in there, mixing it on top. All right, so once again, going back to the blue purple, I'm gonna add that maybe on top of here. And it might even just be slightly different than your blue. See, it just kind of pops off. It's nothing crazy, Again, nothing dark. You can stack it a little in and amongst your purple if you wish. I'm gonna bring it over to the side here on the top. So really guys, the only area I'm avoiding is this part here because I want to save it for a nice peach. We're going to do some peach colors just to stack on top of one another over there. So I'm going to carry the blue over this side. And I tried to keep, um, I keep calling them the scraggly bits, so I'll keep calling them that. The scraggly bits here, the purples, I keep them a little clean, so I'm trying to add my blue kind of ripples around them. Try not to intersect with them or overlap. If you overlap here and there, of course, that's fine. And you could always re-add them later, but I just kind of avoided them personally. Just filling in any little gaps. I'll bring this closer again in a second so you can really see. See that, how it's just kind of filled in any gaps that used to be around there. And I also brought it up here, and you can see once again how I encourage you to put both colors together. You can see I added a couple little purple streaks, or blue streaks rather, in and amongst the purple. Just to get those a little combined. Cool. I'll just give it a quick pause, and then you can do uh, some peach. Hold on, I'm going to mute this as I blow my nose. That's a little better. Is that on? Yes, okay. No more blowing the nose into the microphone. Good. <laughs> okay, again, just giving a quick minute if you're adding those blues and purples because I want to make sure we're on the same page with the peach just because that's kind of a new color. We haven't really added peach anywhere else, so I want to make sure you're all up to speed with how to mix peach. And I'm just going to do two different versions of peach for that last little bit here. And then we've got our stars, and that's all. We're going a little past 10, it looks like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 10.07. Late night. So, the colors we've done as a review we have that kind of light to medium purple. And we have the bluish purple. So once again, I would say kind of like the two colors in our moon here. I want to think of it that way. Maybe a little bit darker here and there, but pretty much those tones. Okay, guys, I'm going to move on to our peaches. So we have two peaches. So what I'm going to do is I'll start with more of a regular peach color, and then I'm just going to simply light it up with a little bit more white and stack it on top for a nice highlight. So to start with our peach, we're going to start with pink, actually. We're going to grab red. 
mix it into a pile of white. I'm going to go right here. So just red and white mixed together. So that's pink, but if we want to make peach, the idea is that you add a little bit of yellow to it. And I say a little bit because the more yellow you add, the more it's going to turn literally orange. And we still want it kind of in the pink realm. It's a peach, right? So it's a little bit kind of pinky peach. So just a little bit of yellow. See how uh, the lighting's not doing it justice, but it is a peach and you can add a little more white if you need to lighten it up. That'll really make it a nice peach. Is that working lighting wise? Maybe you can kind of see it. I feel like the lighting's a little bit off right now, but again, red, white and a little bit of yellow is how you make a nice peach color. And the peach is really what I like to use in that kind of center area that I've left a little more blank there. Still looks pink in the camera, but I, trust me, it's peach and peach. So red, yellow, or red, white, little bit of yellow. And this is the color I like to add in here just for a little extra punch, a little extra shade of color, just needed to add a little peach in there because there wasn't any peach around. I love peaches with all of this nice color that we have, pinks, purples, blues, peach is another great color to add in amongst there, so just adding this to add a nice little highlight in the water I thought was a really, really nice addition. So once again, you can kind of splice some in, in amongst your purples or your blues but mostly I'm putting in, again, horizontal lines, wiggly lines, short, a little bit long sometimes. Anywhere in this area here, just bordering the left-hand side of the tree trunk, I should say. And it does look like I actually brought a little bit over on the right as it was just peeking over on the right here. I mean, of course, if you really like this color, you want to put it in more spots, go ahead. Go ahead. We are here, mostly here. And then I talked about layering, right? You can layer as much as you want. If you want to add more shades, you can. I'm just going to add one more shade of peach. So what I've done on my plate, you can really see the difference there. I added lots of white and now I have a super, super light peach, which I can now stack in and amongst my original peach. And you can see how that just pops right off compared to the other. Just adds and adds and adds. I love that effect of just adding lighter versions of the same color. Because that way they're in the same kind of tone and range, but they're just adding another Another layer, a nice little highlight right on top. So again, you can overlap a little bit, you can go in between those streaks that you've already added, all of them work together. And once again, I'll carry a couple over on this side too, why not? very lightly. You could even like put them in between here if you wanted just like a little glimpse, you know, popping through. I wouldn't add it too much, but if you wanted, you could kind of fill up some gaps in between your dark purples with some peaches as if they're kind of shining through a little bit. something like that. So now you can see how all of these are kind of working together. We've filled up the water. It makes it look nice and ripply. Lots of different shades going on. So they all, once again, have, it's kind of like the, uh, the leaves here. They all kind of have their own sections, but they're all working together as well. You can move them a little into each section to help mix them up a little bit and help them and say hello to each other. Okay, so once again, I'm going to leave that for a quick minute. You can keep looking at it, ask any questions if you've missed anything or need any help with anything, I can totally help you. We just have one last step to go, a nice easy step in my opinion, just adding some twinkly little stars and then we're all done.
I just keep stacking peaches, why not? Because I mean, there's no harm in really covering up the base colors, the blues and the pinks that we added, because that's what they're meant to be, just bases, right? So if you end up stacking on so much peach or so much blue or purple that you don't really see the background color anymore, then that's great. It's really just the background color is there just in case kind of fills in all the gaps. You can still see the blue and pink, but for the most part, we've now overtaken those with the blues and purples and peaches. More peach, please. There we go. Love it. Okay. So I'm just going, to, going on to the last step here, just because it's a pretty, again, in my opinion, straightforward step, just dotting on some stars. So if you're still happily adding some little ripples in the water or even still working on your branches, keep going, just keep taking your time. Whoops. Um, I don't think I mentioned, but I do stick around after we're done the last step. So even if you have questions afterwards, don't worry, I don't disappear very quickly. I'm still here, so. I'm just going to go ahead to the last step for those who are ready. I'm using my teeny tiny brush finally here. <laughs> it's been waiting the whole time. He's like, when are you going to use me? Right now. Now is your time. Grabbing a nice big blob of white. And what I like to do for stars is literally just tap the end of my brush like this. You can see small little white dots come off. So the harder you tap, the larger the dot will be. The lighter you tap, the smaller it'll be. I do like to really blob on the paint because I find that helps uh, create some nice round circles. I'm sure we'll get some comments in a second. Everyone has, again, their own technique for stars, even stars, right? Like something that you think is so simple. Everyone finds different, better ways to do it for themselves. So some people like to use the other end of the brush. See how my brush has a little white tip on it? That's because I was using it at one point to dip and dab. I like to call it dip and dab because you have to dip each time. Dip, dab, dip, dab. Uh, people use q-tips, people use fingers, uh, you can splatter stars if you want to get a little messy. For this painting I decided to keep it a little cleaner. So like a toothbrush could be used if you want to splatter. Lots of different ideas for that. And I'm just trying my best to uh, kind of scatter these wherever so I'm not trying to make a specific pattern but I always say it's always fun to do like a little hidden object or constellation or something, so if you want to do that, personalize it, you certainly can. Andrea, thanks so much. Looking forward to more PAs. We'll be sending a small tip via... Oh, thanks so much, Andrea. And yeah, I'll shut that out because she did mention it. I do have an e-transfer link and a PayPal link in my description if you choose to support me today. Thank you if you do. If you don't, totally understand. I'm not writing down names or anything, so you're fine. <laughs> Um, I do these events with the full expectation that I might not get any e-transfers or PayPal uh, contributions, so please no worries. The whole point of this is just to uh, encourage some people to paint, and I have a lot of fun teaching, so that's really all that I care about. And again, I've said it a few times recently, I can't thank you guys enough for being such a just kind community, kind and supportive in terms of just being positive. That's just all I wanted currently with some positivity and some happy faces and having some company while painting so that's all honestly enough for me and uh yeah if you choose to contribute all the links are there thank you so much otherwise thanks for coming really that's mainly what, I, what i'm happy about uh andrea i'll see you soon yes thank you all right so just letting you know i finished off my little stars there so i'm finished with my painting like I said before, if you need to keep taking your time, go for it. But if you are all done, don't forget to sign it. Do a little signature. There we go. I do just little initials in the corner, so that's what I stick to. So yeah, that's uh, that's this one all done. Look at that. Again, thanks so much for you guys for uh, speaking up and saying, hey, you should teach that because I like it. I think it was a big hit, so thanks, uh, thanks for encouraging me to do that. Um, Next tutorial, if you're interested, Sunday at 7 p.m. We're doing the wine glass painting, which I showed off a little earlier. Uh, if you'd like to have a look at it, there's a Facebook event page with the uh, painting in the banner photo. And uh, yeah, I'll say that you can still RSVP to that to be notified, but maybe it's best as well to uh, 
set up your own little alarms and things just in case Facebook doesn't do its job because it doesn't sound like Facebook is doing its job very recently. Almost Grog, thank you very much. Now I have two of the same painting, what do you know? <laughs> Mish, thanks very much. I may have to do Sunday on YouTube. No worries, yeah, that's okay. I'll look for you, Mish, but if not, that's cool. Can't wait to try this one. Yay, Lisa! So Lisa just watched along and she'll try again, uh, or try for the first time when it's on YouTube. So awesome. So yeah, again, reminder, if anyone wants to review this or check out any of my past tutorials, I have lots up now. I've really created quite the collection together. Uh, YouTube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints is where you want to go. Uh, keep following the Facebook page for some notifications. I kind of use that, I would say, as my main communication hub. So any announcements, anything I'm testing out, any questions I want to pull to the audience, usually on Facebook, so keep following me there. I'll shout out Twitch again. Thank you so much, Twitch uh, viewers, for coming out and having a good time with me. Uh, for those on Facebook, check out Twitch. All those on Twitch, maybe check out Facebook if you wish. Uh, yeah, crisscross over, it's fun. Uh, but yeah, Twitch I've been playing around with for the past few weeks, just live streaming on there. So if you want to see me just mess around with art rather than teaching, um, I do that more often on Twitch. So you'll see me create upcoming tutorial paintings, you'll see me just experimenting with art. I create lots on there and it's a fun little community we've created there already as well. So you can it's the same thing, you can chat amongst each other and uh, I respond pretty quickly there as well. So just another little spot to check me out if you wish. Take care, Miss Grove. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you later. Yay! And then, Alyssa, thanks for another great night. You're welcome. You're welcome, Sharon. I'll see you Sunday. Maybe before then. I'm on Twitch tomorrow in case anyone's interested. 10 to 3. <laughs> so, if you want to just spend a Saturday morning, afternoon, just chilling out watching me paint. Because I know some people like to do that anyway with these tutorials. They like to just kind of hang out and see me paint. And that's kind of what Twitch is about. Just kind of hanging out, watching me paint giving some feedback. So there you go. Melanie, really, really enjoy. Thank you so much. Love the collection on YouTube. Yeah, there's, it's quite the collection now. It's great. Heather, awesome. Can't wait to do that. Yeah, again, thanks for coming all the way from Australia. A nice big, big travel day all the way around the world. Cool. You're welcome, Sherry. Thanks. Love it, she says. Mystic's giving me the OS frog. Ooh. <laughs> thing is so funny. Thanks, as always, had a great time. You're welcome, Julie, of course. Me as well. Great time, always. I'll hang out for another minute or two just to make sure all of our questions are answered. If anyone has any last minute questions, things they need a little bit help with, let me know. Bye, Oriana. Have a good night slash morning. Yep, good night for me, morning for some apparently. So yep, good night and good morning to some. Cool, Sharon, I'll see you tomorrow, awesome. <laughs> Long time no see. Thanks, CJ. Appreciate it. It's all finished. All finished. I'm gonna hang out for one more minute just to be sure here. Probably CJ, probably. I need to uh, film a little intro for this YouTube video. Hey YouTube. And uh, <laughs> and then splice this up a little bit and then upload it. I can even do that tomorrow morning though. I'd like to get it done as soon as possible, so I'll try my best. I think I'll play a little bit though, I'll let you know as usual. Okay, yeah, comments have totally slowed down and I see people dropping off here. So I'll say another quick goodbye. Thanks again guys for coming. Uh, Facebook, I'm signing off. I'll see you at the next one. Bye!